Hi everyone, thanks for coming by and taking the time to watch another video on our channel. My name is Kyle Smith, I'm one of the founders of YWIRE Technologies and today we just wanted to look at one of the most common questions that we get at YWIRE and that's why would I invest in a networked control system for lighting control when I can basically do the same thing with an occupancy sensor. It's an excellent question, we get it a lot and we're happy to take a closer look at it today. So let's start by just taking a look at the environment these decisions are being made in and understand the challenges that energy engineers and facility managers and building operators are facing on a day-to-day -day basis. The first of which is that the average building in the U.S. is 42 years old. It was built in 1971. Uh, that's the same year that NASA launched Apollo 14. In fact, only 15% of the buildings that exist today are under the age of 10. So there's a massive base of commercial buildings in the nation uh, that are in desperate need of modernization while at the same time facing maintenance needs that require more and more dollars every year. In fact, I think one of the biggest challenges for a lot of property managers is just simple triage, prioritizing how to best spend their dollars to keep the building functional and moving forward at the same time. To make matters worse, we're still dealing with an environment where budget dollars can be a little hard to come by. We have a rapidly growing list of needs within the buildings themselves, uh, but the budgets aren't really growing to accommodate that. So considering everything else that building owners have on their plate, when it's time to finally make a decision about lighting control, uh, they look at an industry that's been moving pretty quickly in the last few years. There are four different types of wireless technologies on the market. There's Ethernet-based controllers, there's daylight harvesting, integrated blind control, there are lighting control panels. And while the number of choices that you have has grown, and that's a really good thing, uh, the amount of time you have to make those decisions has shrunk. So with all of these factors considered, everything really just points towards putting in occupancy sensing switches and being done with it. And why not? You know, occupancy sensing switches are cheap. They're everywhere. Everybody's familiar with them. Implementations are really usually pretty fast. Uh, they're easy to understand. So why wouldn't you put in occupancy sensing switches? And that may be the right choice for your facility. You know, there's always going to be a place for simple and clean energy conservation measures. But by putting in something that simple, you may be letting a huge opportunity pass you by. Every owner should have a five-year plan for their building. Some plans focus around attracting new tenants, others towards a growing employee headcount, and some on pure sustainability. Whatever the case, every single plan is trying to increase the value of the property. For a lot of buildings, that's purely an assessed dollar figure, uh, while others could be weighted more towards operational efficiencies. Either way, five-year plans have to take into account potential uses of the facility, changes in ownership, legislative requirements, technology trends, and future energy costs. The most important point here is that none of these things are static. Every single one of them is defined by change. If that's the case, the systems we invest in should be able to meet a few requirements. First, systems should be flexible enough to adapt to the changing needs of the building occupants. Second, we should have as much information as we can about the life cycle cost of the system, and we should base our payback analysis around that instead of just the upfront cost alone. They should also be powerful enough to address code requirements or technology advancements that can't be anticipated today. We don't want any investment that we make today become obsolete and scrapped based on changes in code or internal energy strategies. We also want to provide an efficient vehicle for capital investment. Now this is an important point, so let's just spend a few seconds here. Building systems aren't completely isolated from each other. Uh, the most common example being that turning lights on adds heating load to the building and raises your cooling bill. If operational budgets are already stressed, and each system in the building is connected to another, then it's smart to choose systems that not only justify their own payback, but also positively affect the operating cost of other systems in the building. In other words, we want to try to make a rising tide lift all boats. With that in mind, we need to ask ourselves the question, do occupancy sensors fit into our five-year plan? So let's see how occupancy sensors stack up. And we'll start with flexibility. Now, occupancy sensing is an excellent first step in any energy conservation strategy. But as the building matures, we may want to add to that. We may want to incorporate scheduling on-off times for evening and weekends. 
uh, we may want to put in some dimming. Most spaces are brighter than they need to be so we can actually tune the lights down to meet the needs of the tasks that are performed in that space. Or we can start using ambient light from the sun by implementing daylight harvesting. While occupancy sensors don't stop us from putting in those systems, they don't do anything to help us either. In fact, in some cases they may have to be removed completely before the new system or strategy can be implemented. We want products we choose to lay a foundation for the continual improvement of our buildings. That way the investment we make is leveraged with each improvement that comes along with the life of our building. Standalone occupancy sensors don't give us that option. They're really a silo investment. Secondly, life cycle cost has to be considered from a couple of different angles. As tenants in a building get used to having occupancy switches, there can be a lot of complaints. If the switches weren't calibrated properly, or people who live in those spaces simply need changes made, you have to be in front of the switch with a screwdriver to adjust it. So if we explore that, let's start with the initial cost of installation, and usually the minimum is about 100 bucks per space. If we have to make a single service call on that device, the electrician has to come to site and another $200 has been added to our payback scenario. In just one service call, the price and the payback window have tripled. We also have to consider the ongoing maintenance burden with the system. Now outside of complaint calls, the maintenance associated with occupancy sensors is really pretty light, but that doesn't mean that it's zero maintenance. If there are any product defects, if there are damaged units, or if the product isn't delivering the savings that we were counting on, we usually have no idea. If you can't communicate with the product, you're essentially flying blind. You can't tell anything about its performance or condition unless you actively monitor it. Next, forward compatibility. The smart grid is still a pretty new concept and the applications within and around it are starting to emerge. But like the internet has changed the way we interact with each other at work and at home, the smart grid is going to change the way our offices and our neighborhoods use energy. While we have some visibility into how the smart grid could develop with programs like demand response, we really don't know where the opportunities to participate are going to come from in the future. What we do know is that the minimum requirement of participation is communication. If you can't communicate with your energy systems, your building is locked out of the smart grid community. Lastly, we wanted to focus on capital efficiency. In a perfect world, we could use the information from our occupancy sensors to help us optimize other systems. We've made the decision to put in occupancy sensors in every single room in the building, and that's a really great thing to have. Other systems like HVAC, access control, or emergency systems could use that occupancy information to improve their own performance. But because we don't have a means of communication, these systems are invisible to us. So overall, while occupancy sensing switches are an easy choice to make, they essentially freeze our building at a point in time when that product was made. And if we think about it, that was really the problem we were trying to solve in the first place. Our buildings are stuck in another decade and we're trying to drag them into present day. So if we're choosing a system that doesn't meet the needs of our five-year plan, we're really extending that problem into another time and place. Now let's do the same thing with networked controls and stack it up against our five-year plan. Again, we'll start with flexibility. This is YWIRE's FSY 1G-M. And this may look like a normal occupancy switch, but it's not. YWIRE invented a light switch with a built-in web server. This device actually has its own home page. You can open up Internet Explorer, type in the IP address for this switch, and communicate with it directly. Now this is great because we can make the switch respond to anything that we can imagine. Let's say that we're a college campus and we want to change the programming based on the season. We can do that straight from our laptop. If we want to implement time of day schedules, that's easy to do too, and it's instantaneous. It allows us to get really creative with our energy saving strategies, and it's 100% changeable. The system grows along with your needs and ideas. Secondly, this is the FSY FMOC, and this device is basically the same as the last switch we looked at, except that it sits in the ceiling. It still has a web server in it, so we can talk to it and turn lights on and off remotely. But we also wanted the FMOC to be a platform for growth. If you wanted to install this product now and just do on-off control, that's no problem. If you want to come back in three or four years and put in dimming control or daylight harvesting, we can do that from this same controller. 
This way we don't make you keep coming back to us for new hardware to keep your building moving forward. The hardware is capable of growing with your building and the energy decisions that you make. So if we look at life cycle cost within the context of a network system, we're certainly not going to claim that our product is maintenance free. Uh, there's maintenance in everything and, and just like anything else in life, you get out of the system what you put into it. But we will say that the maintenance is far less expensive. We're basically turning the service van into a laptop. Changes made to the system can be done on the fly and from anywhere in the world. Also, as we saw with the FMOC, the Y-Wire lighting control system is designed to evolve alongside your building's energy needs. Uh, we really want each investment in hardware to last through multiple five-year plans, not just one. Also, because our devices are part of a network, we get access to data. And having access to that data allows us to actively monitor the system for areas that are underperforming, devices that may have been damaged, or just defects in the system. We can identify threats to our payback scenario and we can address them immediately. Next, uh, forward compatibility was a major design consideration for our team. Because everything in our world is connected, we knew that any attempt at keeping our product relevant would be based on communication. All of YWIRE's devices are a product of the internet age. As a result, we can natively communicate with the smart grid, with other buildings in your portfolio, or mobile devices. Whatever opportunities present themselves in the future, connectivity is the key to seizing them. And last, capital efficiency is really in our blood. Uh, we're both entrepreneurs and engineers, so we hate to see effort or money wasted for any reason. And we made a critical design decision around that principle early on. We wanted to reuse as much existing infrastructure as possible. Most buildings already have invested in a pretty sophisticated building automation system for their HVAC needs, so why not just use that for lighting as well? All of our products are built to fit right into the building systems you already have. As a result, you have a shared platform for information to be used by any of the building systems you've already networked together. If you want to put the HVAC system into occupied mode based on the light switch's occupancy detection, that's no problem. You can also use the system to clearly light exit routes in case of an emergency or flash a certain pattern for mass notification of a building lockdown. You can even have the system send you email alarms for occupancy detection in off hours. Our devices were built with the idea that data was meant to be shared and used for the betterment of the entire building. So looking at the two systems side by side, it's not that choosing occupancy control is a bad decision. It's certainly better than not doing anything at all. But if you do move forward with just occupancy sensors, you are choosing not to have all of the things that networked systems can offer your building today and in the future. That includes occupancy detection, scheduling, dimming, data trending, alarming, remote calibration, and integration with systems like HVAC and emergency systems and participation in the smart grid. Multiple studies have shown that by combining these strategies and leveraging capabilities in this way, you can save about 50% more energy than just by using occupancy sensors alone. So if networked controls are so fantastic, then why aren't they more common? And the answer to that question has always been upfront cost. Networked controls have been traditionally a really expensive proposition. YWIRE's sole reason for being, our one and only goal, is to make network lighting control affordable for every building in the world. If you're considering standalone occupancy sensors because you don't think you can afford the luxury of networked controls, please take a look at the other videos on this channel and learn how YWIRE is cutting the price of smart grid technologies in half. And that's about it for today. If you have any questions at all, please take a swing by our website or send us an email to get more information. Thanks again for the time and take care.